Tell me if you've heard this before. A world leader in smartphones and consumer electronics wants to make an autonomous electric vehicle. Apple recently gave up on their plans, but not Xiaomi. They're sometimes called the Apple of China. And their first vehicle, the SU7, is just hitting the roads. Let's take a look. I'll resist talking about the history of Xiaomi as a company, but I will point out that their top-of-the-line phone, the 14 Ultra, has a lens system co-developed with Leica, the famous camera and optics manufacturer. I love my iPhone Pro, but I'm jealous of this thing. There's even an add-on photography kit to make it more of a camera. Hey Apple, here's an idea. Forget about the Vision Pro. Make something cool like this. Back to the car. SU stands for... Speed Ultra, and 7 is a common designation for vehicles of this size in China. It was revealed in December 2023, and it didn't take five years to hit the road. More like three months. Quick glance, you can see that size-wise, it will compete with models from Neo, Xpeng, Zeker, and BYD. I should add to that the Tesla Model S and Porsche Taycan, but they are overall just way more expensive and since they're imported into China, they get heavily taxed. So for reference, I'll make a comparison to the Model 3, even though that's a smaller EV. So keep that in mind. Styling is very good, but as you can probably see, it's not all that unique from some of its competitors. It's common for automakers of EVs to brag about their drag coefficient with each new release. And Xiaomi SU7 looks slippery, and it is. At highway speeds, it offers active rear spoiler, air suspension to the lower the car, and functional vents to achieve that low drag. Efficiency is beautiful, and more range is great. But at some point, you need to make these EVs look different from each other in some way. In that regards, I dig the shooting brake look of the Zeker and the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. The launch edition will be offered in three color combinations. Aqua blue with galactic gray interior, mineral gray with sunset red interior, and inverted green metallic with obsidian black interior. Oh, and yeah, you can get Xiaomi phones available to match the exterior colors. The Xiaomi SU7 will come standard as a single motor, rear wheel drive, and then offered as a dual motor and higher performance model. But the starting price is the real wild card here. The Neo is all wheel drive and more expensive at the top of this list. The BYD Han EV, as you might guess from BYD, is the value play. I'll warn you that this chart could quickly become outdated. Prices for all vehicles in China, gas and EVs, are changing frequently. Most rumors put the estimates for this vehicle at 266,000 yen. That's about 37,000 US dollars. When the SU7 was revealed, Xiaomi highlighted five key technology areas. The first one we'll talk about is their hyper die casting technology. And yes, it's just like Tesla's Giga Casting. They openly compared themselves to them, although other manufacturers are starting to do this too. Xiaomi's casting is larger than what Tesla uses in the Model Y, so that requires a machine capable of higher clamping pressure. The 9100T machine was co developed with. Haitian die casting, and it operates at pressures up to 9,500 tons. That's more than Tesla. Now, Xiaomi did not totally lose their minds and build a car plant. There are plenty of automakers in China, and they selected a subsidiary of BAIC to make the SU7. The name for this platform is Modena, and you can expect other body types to be offered off of this platform in the future. Xiaomi's first e-motors have been developed through partnerships with existing suppliers. More advanced motors will come next that are being developed independently on their own and will be manufactured in their own facilities. They plan to offer three different motor types. HyperEngine V6, as the name implies, offers good power output, like you would expect from a V6 combustion engine. They were co-developed with two suppliers, Innovance Automotive and UMC. They claim an industry-leading speed of 21,000 RPM and advanced cooling techniques to achieve that high spin rate. Most EVs max out at up to 18,000 RPM or less. The HyperEngine V6 is the base motor for the rear-wheel drive SU7. It's a 400-volt motor. 
A 0 to 62 time of 5.3 seconds is expected for that version. A V6S is an optional 800 volt version offering more power. Why are they talking about RPM so much? It's because most EVs use a single gear reduction, not a multi-speed transmission like a combustion engine vehicle. Higher RPMs give them more flexibility to select a gear reduction that allows for a higher top speed. The Porsche Taycan is an exception to this. They have a two-speed gearbox, one ratio for low speeds and a higher gear ratio for Audubon driving at high speeds. At launch, a more expensive Max model with dual motors, all-wheel drive, Brembo brakes, launch control, a button on the steering wheel for 20 seconds of overboost, and other goodies will be available. Two motors combined to produce 664 horsepower, an acceleration faster than the 2023 Porsche Taycan. However, the updated 2024 Porsche Taycan is now a little bit faster than that. Manufacturers in China like to advertise top speed too, and yes, it's fast by that measure. So the SU7 will be fast even before their Hyper Engine V8S gets introduced in 2025. These e-motors are their own design, spinning even faster and producing more power. Xiaomi claims their steel plates, the motor laminations that are bonded together, feature an industry-first high-strength silicon steel. Beyond that, they are in development of a carbon-sleeved e-motor. That kind of sounds familiar, right, Elon? The carbon-sleeve technology allows it to spin even faster without blowing up for even more power. Batteries, more so than electric motors, are becoming the core competency that every EV manufacturer wants to be great at. BYD and Tesla have shown that if you can vertically integrate and scale the manufacturing of batteries, you can achieve profitability. Let's look underneath the SU7 to see how it stacks up. SU7 will launch with a standard 74 kilowatt hour capacity, providing a range of 415 miles on the CLTC test. Now that test is more generous than the WLTP used in Europe and way more generous than the EPA, so keep that in mind. This rear-wheel drive model is a 400-volt system, and the starting price is highly anticipated. Over 1,000 engineers from CATL and Xiaomi work together on this standard lithium-iron phosphate battery. An optional 101 kilowatt-hour battery is also available, developed with CATL, and this one will be the more expensive NMC chemistry. This is the battery used in the Performance Max version with a range of nearly 500 miles, again on the CLTC test. They claim for their system a peak voltage of 871 volts. A new battery plant near Beijing is being built with CATL. This will supply the growth plans beyond this initial SU7. Xiaomi said they self-developed the cell-to-body integration of these batteries into the vehicle. C to B or CTB is something that other manufacturers are starting to do to reduce the cost for how EVs are assembled, but it makes replacing the batteries a little more difficult. The reasoning is that if you make a high quality battery, there's little need to service them. So package them in a way that allows you to make the vehicles less expensive and roomier. Battery cells have pressure relief system in them in the event that they overheat. Xiaomi decided to invert the battery so they would relieve pressure downward if they had to, away from the passenger compartment. They also gave extensive information about the thermal insulation and liquid cooling surface area in their technical presentation. They strongly believe that they have developed the safest solution in the industry, thermal and crash protection. I did a video on Apple's car program and concluded that it was their pursuit of full autonomy that eventually killed the program. Xiaomi Pilot Autonomous Driving is an advanced but not yet fully autonomous driving system that will appear on the SU7. This is where Xiaomi, with their strong background in AI, intelligent software, and imaging technology, they bring a lot to automotive. They have 1,000 developers and over 200 test vehicles working on autonomous driving. Their systems will use a combination of sensor inputs, 11 HD cameras, 3 radar sensors, 
and 12 ultrasonic sensors. The bubble at the top of the windshield, that's going to house a LiDAR sensor. And all this gets processed by NVIDIA or in processors. Here's an example of the expertise they can bring. In rain and snow, large trucks can emit spray from the wheels. Ordinary systems see this spray as an obstacle. But Xiaomi Intelligent Filters can determine that this is not an object that has to be avoided. They also claim that they've deployed AI to enable automated parking. Now, other automakers are working on this too, but some require special infrastructure in the parking deck or other mapping of that parking deck, which again, limits how widely it can be deployed. Overall, I would describe their system as lighter than say Neo or Xpong, but not as light as Tesla, who still believes that they can achieve full self-driving using only cameras. Xiaomi sounds impressive, but there are lots of companies showing impressive diagrams and videos for autonomy. Nobody has perfected it yet. Like many other automakers, Xiaomi will launch with some useful driver assistance features and then add new functionality and higher levels of self-driving down the road via over-the-air software updates. Last but certainly not least, we have the Xiaomi Smart Cabin. This is where you would think a smartphone manufacturer should be able to differentiate themselves from the competition. Let's see how they did. The SU7 will feature a high-definition 16.1-inch central tablet. I mean, that's, that's what it is. A smaller cluster display rotates when the EV is turned on. And then there's a 56-inch heads-up display projected on the windshield. That sounds massive, but from the images, I'm not sure how they get that measurement. Like many other EVs, touch controls dominate the interior, but they will offer owners the ability to add physical buttons if they want as an add-on accessory. Processing is done by a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor for the front displays and supports the optional rear tablet displays for the passengers. Being a smartphone manufacturer, integration of the owner's Xiaomi smartphone and their Hyper OS is to be expected. Not only phone projection for the driver, but plug and play capability for the optional rear tablets, including allowing the driver to use those cameras in the tablets to monitor kids in the back seat. Xiaomi phones are hugely popular in China, but so are Apple products. All right, so Xiaomi will offer Apple CarPlay support. They'll also support AirPlay. And if you want to use iPads in the rear seats, they say that's no problem. To keep the digital cockpit comfortable, Xiaomi SU7 uses a more efficient heat pump. They claim that their heat management is superior to other EVs, which will allow them to be, and I quote, king of cold weather range. In summary of the Xiaomi SU7, I'm most interested in the price of the rear wheel drive model. They need to get that right. Now I know talking about hundreds of a second acceleration is far more exciting, but there are lots of stupid fast EVs out there in China and elsewhere in the world. We're in the midst of an affordability backlash by consumers. Gas, diesel, and electric vehicles have all been going up in price, but we seem to have run into a limit, like a brick wall. High interest rates, increased supply of new vehicles, and economic uncertainty in some regions are pushing those prices back down. Xiaomi may not mean much to people here in North America, but in China and in Europe, it's a brand that people are attracted to. They've made no announcements about selling this vehicle outside of China, but they have tested it on the European crash standards, including the Elk test, and it did great. I'll keep an eye out for more news coming out of Xiaomi, but for now, thanks for watching.